Luna Lomonaco from the University of Sao Paulo, and uh, she's going to talk about mating quadratic maps with the modular group. Thank you very much, and thank you the organizers uh, for this great conference. It's a great, great honor to be here. And yeah, I'm going to speak about mating quadratic maps with the modular group. This is actually the title. This is a joint work with Sean Bullet um, from Queen Mary, and it's actually the title of a paper of Sean together with Chris Penrose from 1994, where they constructed topological matings between quadratic polynomials and the modular group, and proved that actually this mate there exists a family of correspondences which contains some of these matings. They conjecture that this would have been the case for every member in this family, at least with the parameter in the connectedness locus. And Sean has been working on that for a while. And, well, we actually proved that for every member of this family um, with parameter in, connect in the connectedness locus, uh, the correspondence is a meeting between a quadratic map and the modular group, just not a quadratic polynomial, but another uh, family of maps uh, with a parabolic fixed point, since one branch of this correspondence has a persistent parabolic point. But I'll explain everything step by step. So, uh, the first two slides are mainly for showing pictures. As I guess everybody here knows, if we, have, if we consider the quadratic family, zeta squared plus c, then infinity is a super attracting fixed point, and we can define the field Julia set uh, for the, as the complement of the Basinger of attraction of infinity. And the Julia set is the boundary of the field Julia set. Here there are some examples of field Julia set. And the Mandelbrot set is the connectedness locus for this family, which is the set of parameters for which the field Julia set is connected. On the other hand, the modular group, PSL2Z, is the group of two two matrices with integer entries and determinant one uh, under this equivalent relation. It is a finitely generated Kleinian group and this is the tessellation of the modular group on the upper off plane. So one can wonder, and why are you telling this? Well, because in the beginning of the 80s, actually before I was born, uh, this time is true, uh, uh, Sullivan realized that the words, the words of rational maps and Kleinian groups are not so different. And he started relating them, finding analog analogies, uh, in particular for this talk, between the FATO set of a rational map, which is the set of points around which the family of iterates is equi continuous, and the ordinary set for a Kleinian groups, and he related the Julia set for a rational map with Limit sets for Kleinian groups. And this was the beginning of what is called Salomon Dictionary, and I uh, could say that a climax, at least of this, was the Salomon proof of no wandering theorems by adapting the argument Alfred's used for proving the finiteness theorem for Kleinian groups. So in these years, people was interested in, wow, these two things that seem so different, actually they are not so different. And Sean and Chris starting looking a particular family of correspondences and so this. So I'm like, wow. First of all, what's a correspondence? Well, of correspondence is a weird object. It's a holomorphic correspondence on the Riemann sphere. It's a multi-valued map defined by a polynomial relation. 
What does it mean? Well, let's take, we consider uh, two tuple correspondences. The, this means that the polynomial relation, the polynomial has a grid two in zeta and two in W. And well, if we have the algebraic surface S defined by P zeta W equals zero, and we consider the projection on the Riemann sphere where zeta leaves and the projection on the Riemann sphere where W leaves. Well, let's take a concrete example that I'm going to need after. zeta squared plus zeta w plus w squared minus 3 equals 0, for example. Then uh, the, the holomorphic correspondence, the two-tool holomorphic correspondence defined by this polynomial is the correspondence, the multivalue map, uh, going from this Riemann sphere to the other. And why am I telling you this? Because it turns out that correspondence are objects that are uh, general enough to include as uh, special particular cases both rational maps and Kleinian groups. And so, I mean, it was beginning of the 90s. They started, Chris and Sean investigated a family a particular family of correspondences, I will show you the formula in a moment. And I started to look, they saw these pictures. So I'm like, wow, this looks like a field Julia set, another field Julia set, and the action with the action of the modular group outside. And this prompts the question, what about mating quadratic polynomials with the modular group? And they did a topological construction for doing this. Um, well, in these slides, I use the dual deal rabbit, but since I'm a very, 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 very bad painter, I will use a different field Julia set for doing this on the blackboard. What the construction they did? Well, let's consider your favorite field Julia set. My favorite is this one because it's very easy. The unit disk, the field Julia set of P0 of zeta equal zeta square. We have one here, i minus i minus one. And let's start by a attach, glue together two field Julia sets at their beta fixed point, this guy here. So here I have one. So morally, this is i. And this is I. This thing is turned. Here it's easy to see. And defined uh, topological correspondence. We want something to two. Uh, so we put the action of the of P0 here. Here we take the action of the inverse. So this thing is two to one. This thing is one to two. If we want something two to two, uh, this thing needs to have an image and this needs to have a pre-image. So we go between here and there, we have zeta goes to minus zeta. And there we attach outside the upper half plane with the action of the modular group. Identifying zero with minus infinity and plus infinity. These two things glue if the field Julia set is locally connected. Because it turns out that when the field Julia set is locally connected, 
uh, the butcher map extends to the boundary as the, uh, the zeta square. And there is a map, namely the Minkowski map, which conjugates the action of the doubling map with the action of the, and the alpha map with the action of the generator of the modular groups. Here I'm uh, hiding a lot of details. This thing is kind of quite technical, but I don't want to enter into details. This thing can be done. And they proved it in their immense honest paper. And they also, where they also proved that for all, a, for all A in this interval in the real line, this family of correspondences, well, the family of correspondences 2, 2 defined by this polynomial relationship is a mating between a quadratic polynomial, real of course, and the modular group. This means that the first guy I showed you, they proved that this guy is a mating between the basilica and the modular group. This guy we don't know yet, because the parameter is not real. Uh, they plot the connectedness locus for this family, uh, which is the um, set of parameters for which the limit set is connected, and they saw this picture. And they conjecture UI. This thing is homeomorphic to the Mandelbrot set. They look like similar, aren't they? So they conjecture that for every A in this set, the correspondence is a mating between quadratic polynomials and the modular group, and this guy is homeomorphic to this guy. Um, this slide is, is quite technical, and I'm sorry for that, but since we will work uh, with this family, uh, we need to understand how this family uh, works. So, turns out that we can write FA as the composition with a dilated covering correspondence and an involution. What's a dilated covering correspondence? Actually, dilated covering correspondence of this quadratic polynomial. So, uh, this correspondence defined, this is the correspondence defined by this polynomial relation, which exchange the pre-images, the fibers of the polynomial. So if two points go to the same, the correspondence interchange the points going, having the same image. And then the, this is the uh, covering correspondence. The deleted covering correspondence is the covering correspondence uh, after you forget about the identity because the identity is boring and because you want something to two. You want something with the right degree. And, and it has this expression. And it turns out that uh, we can write FA as this deleted correspondence composing by the an involution, involution that fixed one and a. Um, one is a persistent parabolic fixed point of the branch, just one second, sorry, of this, of the branch that fixed this limit set, which I didn't define yet, but. Uh, so, how does these things go? Mm -hmm. 
minus 2 and 1 are both sent by this polynomial to minus 2. So this line sends here, as this sent there, and this is sent there. So what does the covering correspondence doing? Well, it moves this guy here and here. Well, actually, let me add also I don't want to be technical, but I mean, I just want to uh, bound a fundamental domain because in other case, it was kind of uh, what, what was I was speaking about. So what is my the leading correspondence doing? Well, it sent this part, which is a con fundamental domain. We call it delta cov on this part and this part. And actually, vice versa. And what does an involution, the involution with fixed point one and A does? Well, it does, it uh, picks the unit circle passing by one and A and with center on the real axis and send the inside to outside and the outside to inside. So, The correspondence sends this part outside this circle. Uh, the pre image of the correspondence and this part two to one, one to two here, so two to one from here to there, and uh, the and this part goes outside and inside. Well, let's do it here. This is a fundamental domain for my correspondence. The outside of this circle is a fundamental domain for my evolution. So, What it's outside the, the circle by the involution is sent inside the circle, and then by the correspond by the covering correspondence is sent here and there. So f minus one sends one to two delta j inside itself. something inside delta G. And if we are inside, the uh, covering correspondence send what there is here inside, here and here, and the involution sends it here inside. So F sends this part, one to two, here inside. So, what there is outside this uh, red circle is mapped to what there is inside this red curve and by the pre-image. So this goes two to one there. And the pre-image is inside, it's inside, it's inside, it's inside. And the image here is inside, 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 inside. So if you define limit sets, they are gonna look like this the intersection of the pre-images here and the intersection of the images there. And the branch that fixes this limit set is holomorphic everywhere but at the pre-image of the parabolic fixed point because both branches of the correspondences 
send the preimage of the parabolic fixed point to the parabolic fixed point. One is the, well, the poly, uh, one is, one branch is uh, here the quadratic polynomial, sends from here to there. And the other one, morally. And the other one is zeta minus zeta in our topological construction. So we have a neighborhood here that is mapped one to two there. Uh, as I said, Sean has been working quite a lot on this. And they proved with Peter Einsinski that this family, FA, contains matings between uh, the modular group, gamma. By now on, the, uh, all the groups we're speaking about is always the modular group, so we denote it by gamma. And quadratic polynomials for a large classes of parameters, but not for all of them. What's the problem? Well, the problem is that the idea of the proof is taking this guy, perturb it for separating the persistent parabolic point, and then you get this picture. And well, if you look at this picture, uh, this guy is sent there, and this guy, well, I mean, uh, we concentrate on this limit set because we have an evolution between one and the other. So let's concentrate it here. What there is inside this red curve is mapped to what there is inside this red curve. And look, looks like a polynomial like mapping, right? Uh, where a polynomial like mappings, as it's been defined before, is a map between something, a uh, topological disk compactly contained to another topological disk proper, holomorphic, wonderful with some degree. So you take your correspondence, you perturb it for killing the parabolic fixed point, well killing, uh, separating in other two points, you get this picture, you apply polynomial-like mappings, so you get a quadratic polynomial, and then you come back here, how? By a technique Peter has that is pinching to parabolic. The problem is that this technique doesn't work with everything, with all the parameters. There are some parameters that doesn't work. And in the 94 papers, they actually, I mean, this is a quote from there. They say that to prove that our lambda minus and lambda plus are homeomorphic to field Julia set, we should have to extend the dual D Hubbard theory of polynomial like mappings to a theory of pinching polynomial like mappings. This is a difficult technical problem. It was a difficult tec technical problem indeed, and it's the result of my PhD thesis. So, I'll show a picture after, but first, I'd like you to concentrate on this picture here. How it looks like. The thing inside the red corpse here are sent to what is inside the following red corpse. So, it doesn't really look like this. Looks more like this. This is a parabolic-like mapping. It's the object I defined in my PhD thesis. And I gonna draw this picture for you here on the blackboard because I prefer having the definition on the slide because the definition is quite unpleasant and long to write. What's a parabolic-like mapping? It's an object uh, for tuple uh, that consists on a map F that goes between a topological disk, U prime, to another topological disk, U, which doesn't contain U prime. And F is proper holomorphic, wonderful, but it has a parabolic fixed point, let's call it zeta zero, of multiplier one. And there is an invariant arc that we call gamma 
dividing arc, that it divides. The parabolic petal, or parabolic petals, you can have 45 million petals here, you don't care, but you want all of them on this side. From some polynomial-like part, in the sense that, I mean, this is some kind of expanding part. We call these parts delta part, just for, since you're looking at the definition, so delta prime and delta, and omega prime and omega. But the important thing is that this part that we called omega prime is compactly contained into the range, into u. And here, I don't have critical points. Why don't I want, uh, I want not to have critical points? Because I want to feel kind of free to throw away this part without losing too much information. Avec nonchalance. So the picture is really this one. Well, I mean, I, the most you can change is you, if you have 45, well, let's say three, because in other case it's too long to draw, but if you have three attracting petals here, then you have something like that. But on this side, you have something compactly contained here. And how you define your Fedria set? Well, as a set of points that never escape this set that is compactly contained, right? And the Julia set is the boundary. As polynomial like mappings are objects that behave as polynomials, parabolic like mappings are objects that behave as a parabolic family, family of quadratic parabolic maps, uh, rational quadratic uh, maps with a parabolic fixed point of multiplier one, uh, fixing the parabolic fixed point at infinity and critical values at plus minus one, we get what in Milner notation is the family per one one. Uh, for this family, everybody in this family has a um, parabolic fixed point of multiplier one. A parabolic fixed point has a basing of attraction. So, in analogy with polynomials, we define the field Julia set to be the complement of the basing of attraction of infinity. That now is parabolic, just not super attracting. So, for example, we take this guy. We have here our parabolic fixed point. Everything outside this set is the basing of attraction of this parabolic fixed point. So everything goes there. Beside this, that is the Fedria set. So if I want to construct a parabolic well, a very trivial parabolic like restriction of this guy, what do I do? Well, I take a neighborhood. And how does it look like the pre image? Well, this guy are going to infinity. And this is closer to infinity than this part. So if this is u, u prime, here is closer. Here, well, here you have the parabolic direction. So the pre image is. And what are your invariant rate? Well, you, always, you can always take pre image of straight lines in FATU coordinates. Just they need to be in the definition because if you have a bench of petals, depending what uh, FATU coordinate you take, you change the degree. In my thesis, I con developed a theory for parabolic-like mappings that is basically parallel to the theory of polynomial-like mappings. You have a straightening theorem that says that uh, every degree two parabolic-like mappings is hybrid equivalent to a member of the family per one one. 
and this memory is unique if the field reset is connected. Those are works with, well, we had families, it's just that we are not interested in those here. So what do we do now? Well, this guy here, and we know that the um, branch that fix this limit set is holomorphic everywhere, but on a neighborhood of this point. A neighborhood, this, what is contained in this little disk, is sent one to two to what is to its image. So I mean, this guy is sent here, and it's sent here. So what do you do? Well, we do an easy surgery for killing this, in the sense that we change it on a sector by correspondence in order to send this thing to here homeomorphically. When you do it, you find a parabolic-like mapping, and by this retaining theory, theorem, you know that this guy is hybrid equivalent to a member of the family per one one. In this case, the rabbit with the rabbit. So we proved, and the result is in the archive since a couple of hours, that uh, for every member of, for every correspondence with A in the connectedness locus, FA is a mating between um, the um, pair one one and the modular group. Well, and you define mating in the, in the logical way. I mean, something that is the hybrid equivalent to uh, a member of pair one one here inside and conformally equivalent to uh, they are, well, the two branches uh, are conformally equivalent to the generators of the modular group here outside. Actually, you have two things to prove, because it's not just inside you have to be average equivalent to this guy. You also need to prove that outside you need to be, you need to have the action of the modular group, which in the case, in the real case, it's kind of easier. This is for saying they didn't do it in the 94 paper. We had to do it, but I didn't really plan to spend too much time on this. You just an idea of the proof is that uh, if you have your parameter in the connectedness locus, you know that your limit set is connected. So you know that you have a Riemann map from the complement to the complement of the, the unit this or to the upper of plane. Now you want the upper of plane. And you want that these Riemann maps conjugates the action of the two branches of your correspondence on the ordinary set to the action of the generators of the modular group. And, well, it's kind of tricky, but, I mean, knowing that your map, your Sorry, your correspondence is, you can write it as the deleting cover correspondence composed to an involution. It's not impossible. Just how much time do I have? Okay. Then I have time to drink. So we'll just give you the first step here. The, um, the quadratic polynomial, well, we, we say that uh, my correspondence is a composition of a deleted correspondence of a quadratic polynomial, of a cubic polynomial, sorry, composed to an involution. My cubic polynomial was Q of zeta 
with zeta to the three minus three zeta. Now, on the basing of attraction of infinity, we have a butcher map between this guy and so Q hat zeta, zeta to the power three. The covering correspondence of this guy is a rotation, right? Because so the deleted one acts like this. So on the ordinary set, we can our uh, Riemann map conjugates this. Well, no, sorry, this two some order three guys. Let's say rho, rho squared, where rho to the three is the entity. And here we have an evolution. So it's not that difficult to guess that we can bring this thing also to uh, order two, uh, some order two generator, some order two guy. Uh, then, I mean, uh, so you have that your Riemann map conjugates the branches of FA to some maybe transformation sigma of order two and some maybe transformation of rho, rho of order three. Then, well, you have to uh, prove that the representation you get is actually the modular group, but that part is quite more technical. So let's concentrate in the last 10 minutes on how turning this branch into a parabolic like map. The surgery is actually not that difficult. Well, uh, this is the schematic, this is the lambda minus, the, my limit set, and this is a schematic draw what you have this. I'm, I told that I'm not such a great painter. So what you have? You have that, well, let's do it here. My limit set, lambda minus, uh, well, I mean, this depends on the parameter A, but let's forget about that. So, we know that there is a set here inside. Well, we know that uh, here around my correspondence is the branch that fixes this guy. The other branch sends this to the other. It's holomorphic everywhere, but on, the neighbor on a neighborhood of this annoying point that is sent well, on this part and on this part. So, if f is one to two, one uh, to two, we have that the inverse uh, well, the inverse of that branch is two to one, right? So, you uniformize this and you have that basically here up to pre post composition you have zeta go to zeta square right and then what you do well I mean you take a sector here around this guy and This part is sent here. We want to keep it. But this part, which is sent here, is an annoying part and we want to kill it. What we do? Quasi conformal interpolation. I mean, you pass through strips, it's not such a difficult interpolation, so I didn't want to spend too much time on that. I just want to mention that. The annoying part is to find 
a domain such that this sector where you change your complex structure is inside the set, but outside its pre-images. And why do you want that? Because you want your more complex structure to be invariant. Then you pull back it, you straighten, you get a parabolic left mapping. You are doing this outside the limit set, so you didn't touch it. Wonderful. You get a parabolic left mapping, and then you get a member of parabola one. Last thing I want to say is that what we're working on now, we actually develop a dynamical theory for this family, which parallels the dual Hubbard theory of quadratic polynomials. We have butcher map, which is exactly the guy that this Riemann map. And having the butcher map, you can define a green function. We don't have external rays, but we have periodic geodesic, and they play more or less the same role. And we can prove a Yokos inequality for this connectedness locus. And why do we care about a Yokos inequality? Because the conjecture was that my connectedness locus was homeomorphic to the Mandelbrot set. So what I want is to prove that my connectedness locus is homeomorphic to the connectedness locus of pair one, one which by a result of Carson Peterson and Pascal Hoche is homeomorphic to the Mandelbrot set. But this is still work in progress. Happy birthday. <laughs>